clay. Picking it with and clay. Picking it with and clay. Picking it with and clay. Hey everybody, you are listening and watching Kicking It With Kay and Clay. I am Kay, and I am so honored to have our special guest today. So today uh, is our first episode or segment called Center Stage, where we highlight and bring to you um, either new artists or artists that's been out that you need to know. So um, our guest today is a saxophonist. He began to play the saxophone in fourth grade. It was love at first sight, but as he put it, it was love at first note. <laughs> in 2002, he left home to enlist into the Air Force, and there he played in the Air Force band, Tops in Blue. And during that time, for a year, is when he discovered his passion to not only be a musician, but to be an artist. That gave him the confidence to do so and to take that leap. So since then, he's been playing with several bands around the Sacramento area and different artists. And he has been um, um, doing what he loved for a while. In 2013, excuse me, he released his first album, Love Extravagant. And ever since then, he's been writing, performing. Everybody, please welcome our guest, Justin Smith Williams. Hey, Justin. What's up, Kay? Thanks hey. for having me. Oh, thank you for coming. It's yeah. been a long time, hasn't it? <laughs> Man, a long time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I, I said this in uh, my post, but just wanted to say it live on the air. You know, you've been a supporter since day one of the music, and I have, I've always appreciated that. So I'm super grateful and thankful uh -huh. and, and honored to be a guest on your show. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it. Yeah. So as I mentioned in the bio, um, you have been living in uh, Sacramento. How was that? It's nice. You know, it's definitely a, a different world out here from, from Detroit, um, especially like <laughs> where, where I live is a little, little small city, small town called Lincoln, California. Uh -huh. I mean, it's, it's like worlds apart from Detroit, you know? <laughs> really? How so? Uh, so I'll say one example, uh, when I was first making friends out here and meeting people out here and they were like, yeah, come on over, come hang out. Mm -hmm. So I was, um, went to the house and, you know, knocked on the door, you know, to say, Hey, I'm here and had them come open the door. I knock on the door they answer the door and they're like, well, why are you knocking on the door, man? Just come in. I'm like, no, you can't just walk into somebody's house <laughs> without them. Right. Me, especially not where I came from. So. <laughs> So it was like a Southern feel, cause you know how mm -hmm. out in the South, well, so some parts of the South, they leave their doors open and- Yeah. Just, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really nice and super safe out here. So it's a, it's a good town. That's good. Yeah. And you've been there for how long now? Man, um, so I've been in California now 17 years. Wow. Yeah. So almost the same amount of time that I grew up in Detroit. Wow, 17 years. Do you miss Detroit at all? No. <laughs> you sound like my brother. <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. Like I miss I miss the people, you know. I miss yeah. my family and friends. And so it's cool when I come back home every year and get to see people. And there are certain like, you know, restaurants and food places and just certain foods that I that I miss. So I, I love to go come back home and, and get those, but no, I, I like it out here. Okay, so what's, what's some of those foods or restaurants that you miss? Well, everybody who knows me knows what the first thing I'm about to say is White Castle. Okay, <laughs> all right. Before before I get to the, to my mom's house, before I see anybody, mm -hmm. the first stop is White Castle to get a, a number two, uh, two double cheeseburgers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is a number two. Yeah. yeah. The six six piece chicken ring, and the fruit punch, and I'm good. <laughs> okay, see, I, I'm the I'm the orange high C type. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's good. <laughs> and what's the other places? Uh, so I gotta get I gotta get some Fago pop. Okay. I gotta get some better made chips. Okay. And then I gotta hit up Coney Island and get some chili cheese fries. Okay, so pretty much 
same some of the same restaurants when most people move out yeah. and they come back and they get yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so you mentioned um well i mentioned in your bio that fourth grade is when mm -hmm. you had a love for the saxophone so what about the sax that drew you to it and you know i don't even know how it happened it just we were we were in band and um, my band director, you you know him, Mr. Willie, Willie J. Yes. McDonald, you know, the man. The man. <laughs> if you don't know who he is, you guys, Google him. He's phenomenal. Willie McAllister. Yes. yes. Like, ex excellence personified. Yes. Um, but yeah, we were, you know, we start starting off fourth grade year and he was like, all right, you guys got to pick your instruments. And I don't know why, but just something in me said, saxophone so when it came to me and i had to choose my instrument i said the sax like i don't recall having heard the sax play before or having any affinity as to why i would choose it but just something mm -hmm. just knew to choose the sax mm -hmm. so when you picked up that sax and you start to play it for the first time what type of feeling did you get hmm i guess the the one feeling was like oh Okay, I, I love this, you know, uh -huh. and it's fun. I love, I always loved music. So getting to play music was just like, oh man, this is the best time ever. And like that, that was like pretty much probably the only thing about school that I loved, you know, was, <laughs> <laughs> was, was band class. So I just, that, that was my, my escape for that, that hour, hour a day going to band was just getting to play music. It, so I just immediately loved it and, and just took to it, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so, and of course you played um, in middle school, elementary school, middle school and high school? Yeah, like all, all throughout. So elementary, middle, high school, college, um, <laughs> and everything in between, you know, they had the summer camps and playing at church. Mm -hmm. uh, so just anywhere and everywhere that I could play growing up is where I played. That's awesome. So at what point did you, did you know, like, okay, I'm good at this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, it took me a while to be able to outwardly say that, you know, cause yeah. you, you, um, you don't want to come off as arrogant and egotistical being like, yeah, I'm, I'm the stuff I'm, you know, I got <laughs> this, you know, um, I, I think I always felt that I was good, but um, where I f like finally started to get that confidence mm -hmm. and being able to like actually outwardly say, yeah, I'm good. And not saying it in a braggadocious way, right, right. And saying it as in recognizing my talent. It didn't, didn't happen until like later in life, like uh, my early twenties, um, mm -hmm. when, uh, as you mentioned, Tops and Blue, when um when I went to go audition for that um uh, that that and going through that experience of auditioning was what kind of gave me that outward confidence like oh okay now you're hearing from other people not just yourself like okay yeah you got something good here um uh, and just being able to do it and know that enjoying that feeling is like okay yeah this is I'm I'm pretty good at this. Okay. So take us back to that audition for Tops in Blue. What did that entail? Man, what did that entail? The, that entailed a lot of having to break out of my shell. <clears throat> you know, growing up, I was always like the the quieter, shy kid. But when you're doing this audition, it's basically like you're putting on a show. You, you were putting on a show in front of an audience. And they wanted to see that they could, you were someone that they could take around the world and put on a show uh, for all of our military members and put on something that, you know, helps take their minds away from whatever they're dealing with, especially for our members that were deployed and stuff. So you had to be willing to let go of your your inhibitions and mm -hmm. <laughs> and just go, go on out and put on the show. So... Um, I played one of my favorite songs from from jazz band uh, back in back in high school. Uh, again, thanks to Mr. Mac, <laughs> uh, David Sanborn song called Bigfoot. So it's just like a real like 
funky song. So it was a song that in order to play it and to get that feeling of it, you, you know, you had to groove, you had to have mm -hmm. fun, you had to dance. So just being willing to to let loose and move around and walk the stage, try try to own the stage as much as I knew right. how to do while playing the sax, that that was a lot of what that uh, that uh, audition entailed. Okay, so being in that um, on tour with um, Tops and Blue, yeah. was there one particular performance in a, in a particular city that really stood out to you? Man, uh, so there is one. I can't remember exactly where where it was. It was some small little European town that we were in, and they just didn't have like the the setup or capacity to support everything that we were doing. Um, so our power went out several times during the show. Oh. And uh, part of, you know, Tops and Blue, they definitely had that mindset of the show must go on. So oh. there was time to be sitting up there looking at each other like, oh my gosh, what's going on? What are we going to do? The power went out, so singers couldn't sing. Well, they could sing, but nobody could hear them. Mm -hmm. um, and like all of our plugged in instruments couldn't play. So we had to think quick of what can we do to keep the show going while giving our tech guys time to figure out the situation and get the generators running. So myself and one of the guitar players and the, one of the trumpet players uh, decided we just went out on the to the front of the stage, all the acoustic instruments, and just started jamming to keep providing, oh. keep providing some music for everybody while our people were figuring everything out. And so that was a moment that just like really stuck out to me. Where it's like, one, I really I was really loving it, and it was just such a a fun experience. Uh -huh. uh, and yeah, so just like yeah, I, I could I could see myself doing this. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so we're are, we are going to go to your first song that we're going to play, yeah. and that's one shot. So before I get into that, though, um, everybody, while the song is playing, those who are watching, there's going to be um, Justin's contact information going across the um, the bottom of your screen, and those who are listening. Um, you can contact him and get his music on jsmusic.com and on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, he goes by J Smith Williams Music and Spotify and Apple Music, uh, Justin Smith Williams. So go ahead and take us through um, one shot. I know that um, it was one of your first ones to reach like a thousand streams. Yeah, over a thousand streams on uh, Spotify, which like uh, if uh, for anybody that uses Spotify, like when you see like the the top songs um, on on, a, on the artist profile, it doesn't really start to show how many streams you have until you get past that a thousand stream threshold. So, okay, so what about what, take us through your process? What 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 is one shot about? Yeah, so one shot that was. That was actually, um, that was one of the first songs that I wrote to a beat that somebody else produced. And it just came at a time when like, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do next musically. Uh, I put out my first two projects and it was just kind of in a in-between period trying to figure out what's next. And I was at a, at a conference for musicians um, and artists and during one of the breaks, you know, I was searching Twitter and one of the producers that I follow, um, Brandon P, super talented guy, uh, he put out that he had a beat sale going on. So I was checking out his beats and the beat for one shot just immediately grabbed me. Like I was uh -huh. listening to it and like without even thinking about it, I started um, humming along to it the first, uh, the melody part that I play on my on my sax. Oh, so. Wow. So I was like, okay, I got to I got to get this beat. Uh, and then it was just the place that I was in, you know, at that point in my life, I uh, was trying to really figure out um, what did I want as a musician and um, 
is it something that I truly felt that I could go for? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just driving around, listening to the beat and just kind of humming along to it and um, letting the inspiration of the words come to me, it just kind of came to me like, if music is something that you want to do or just whatever you want to do in life, you know, you only get, you have mm -hmm. one shot at this life. So you got to do, you know, take the chance, you know, yes, give it, yeah, give it everything that you have and just see what happens, you know. I like that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Justin Smith Williams with one shot. And I've been woke ever since I got the dream family. Uh, yeah, said I would be nothing. Said I couldn't walk on the road, I started running. Always had to pay from the back, now I'm front. Said I couldn't do it, I'm just looking like that's nonsense. My position never flop, but we hopping right over optics. Never could they stop us, my God is watching, we gotta jump. Pressure in the fear is something that we don't gotta talk. Walking on water, but first you gotta cut out the boat. Yeah, I'ma give it all. Living to the fullest till I'm gone. One shot, you gotta give it all you got And live your life Just one, and you can't live it twice One shot, you gotta give it all you got And live your life Just one, and you can't live it twice Awesome like a little, like little island feel to it too. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So and up, up in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So, who are some of your um, inspirations? Who are some of the um, musicians that you look up to? Hmm, uh, musicians that I look up to. So it's funny. Like actually, for the longest time on the on the saxophone end of things, it took me a while to find like those uh, saxophonists that I connected with. Mm -hmm. um, but there were three three primary ones that I uh, it, uh, found myself connecting with. Uh, the first one was Maceo Parker. Um, if you've ever listened to a James Brown song and you heard him say, Maceo. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what he was talking about. Um, just like listening to some of his music and like the funk, funk aspect of it. I really loved it because it, it was like that music featuring a saxophone that wasn't on the smooth jazz spectrum that mm. you know had you bobbing your head and you know wanting to get up and dance so i, I really uh, gravitated towards that and then there was another guy uh, mike phillips who uh he was the first one that i listened to that i heard kind of mix 
that hip hop with the jazz where he would, you know, take, he would play to some, some popular songs and, you know, solo on top of it. And so as a, you know, as a huge fan of hip hop growing up, it was cool to hear songs that I loved in a different, different light. So that helped me to really connect with him. And then there was uh, Kirk Whalum that, wow. yeah. If you don't know the name, you definitely have heard him play before. Mm -hmm. He was the uh, the saxophone solo um, in I Will Always Love You. Mm -hmm. And what I loved about him is that you could listen to him play and he wouldn't always do super complicated stuff, but you could tell how talented he was and you could really connect to the melody and the music because of the way that he played. It was like he was singing, you know, not just like trying to show how super technical he could be on the sax. Okay. So I really, I, I really gravitated towards that because I like to create music that's, you know, that can be catchy, that people can sing along to it, even if they aren't singing along to words, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So your, so describe your style. Hmm. My style. So it's pretty, I would have to say it's definitely a combination of a lot of stuff I grew up with, but lately how I, how I like to describe it is my, my music, especially the, the current music is like, what would happen if Dr. Dre, Carlos Santana and Kenny G had a musical baby? Wow. <laughs> you, you get me. Okay. <laughs> Like, you know, I love, like I said, I love hip hop, so I love hip hop beats, but I love live instrumentation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I really, I really enjoy um, meshing those two worlds together. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go into your second song. Now, okay. this is your first love song, I understand? Yes, the first first love song that I, I wrote for, for me. Yeah. Okay, and I know congratulations on, or I know I told you off, off um, camera yeah. um, on Facebook. Congratulations, you um, taking your relationship to the next level. Yes, You're engaged. Mm -hmm. So, with, does this have anything to do with that? Um, so, in a way, yes, it kind of spoke it into existence. Mm. Uh, uh, this the song, and at least kind of the lyrics to the song especially the the verse that I uh, that I rapped to was kind of it was born from a conversation with the, a good friend out in Nashville um, again when I was out there for uh, one of the music conference and you know she was just telling me like have you ever like just sat down and wrote out what you were looking for and what you yeah. wanted in a uh, in, in a wife or in a partner uh, in a relationship. And I was like, well, you know, I've, I've said it out, but I never really just sat down and wrote that out. So I began to kind of write that out. And in the process of writing it out, I came across this beat and it just, everything just kind of melded perfectly in, in where I was at in that stage of my life where it's like, okay, God, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, wherever she is, bring her to me, you know? Yeah. So like I wrote it out. And then I spoke it out, and that's deep. I like now, that. Now she's here, and that's awesome. Love of my life. Oh, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and then I love this song too. It's, it's, it's a good one. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, this is I see you.
the sack say what I couldn't say. <laughs> right, right. That's what's up. That's what's up. Ain't up there spitting too. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, I'm getting, getting my puff daddy on. Right, um, right. That's not like Diddy in this song. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next for you, Justin? What's next? Uh, so the songs that you've heard now um, are songs that I've been I've been working on a, a new new project that's going to be coming out here um, soon, um, towards the towards the end of June. Um, so those those songs are going to be be on that project, and then also going to start doing a lot of uh, live streaming um, on okay. on different plat on Instagram, on Facebook, and even on uh, on Twitch. Um, like we did something a, a few couple weeks ago, where you know did what I what I like to call the the first ever sax battle on Instagram. Yeah, I saw that on your Instagram. Yeah. So, so it's like a versus um battle. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any um any um, upcoming um battles? Uh no no upcoming battles yet, yeah. but I'm going to do a uh a live a live stream like acoustic session um uh, in the next couple of weeks here. So um all of those details will be posted on uh my Instagram and Facebook uh, coming up soon. So, so yeah, new music and uh, some some new video and streaming things. Just because I I love playing and I, I miss performing. Uh, yeah. So, gotta figure out different ways to perform when you can't get out there into the public. You know. Right. I mean, and a lot of artists are doing it now. So you know, yeah. you like one of the people that I love is. Um, Avery Sunshine. It seemed like she's always giving a concert in her home studio almost like every other week. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we have to find new ways to do things now. So that's what's yeah. up. Yeah. So, okay, that's awesome. So we are going to, I'm going to play the last song. Okay. And this is like a good, um, so like you, like you put in your, in your, um, description, it's a good summertime music. And I can honestly, when I listen to this song, yeah. I can like see myself like just driving like in a 
drop top or something, you know, <laughs> along the coast. I mean, it's got that, it's, yeah. it's got that vibe to it. Yeah. So anything else you want to say about that song? I mean, yeah, you, uh, you perfectly like encapsulated it and, uh, a huge inspiration for that song was one of my favorite um, songs ever. And the song that like, for me, like it's not truly summer until I listen to it. Mm -hmm. It's summertime, you know, by, oh, yeah. by Will Smith, Fresh Prince. That's the anthem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was a huge inspiration um, behind some of the lyrics to the, to the, to the song. Okay. And, you know, I just wanted to encapsulate, have that feel of, being with your friends, being with your family, uh, having the barbecue, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe playing some spades outside. Right, a nice cookout song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, everybody. So this song is called So Fresh. I'm shining, music bumping, windows down, way back It's that summertime, feel so fresh Kid kicks the flow while I'm jamming on the sax Ha <laughs> tell them kid Wind's blowing, music blaring, friends laughing, bass slaps in the back It's that summertime, feel so fresh I bring the flow, I just plays on the sax <laughs> Let the music play It's time for you to maybe relax and just let it go These moments that you gotta cherish make a special Cause tomorrow's never promised I'm living to the fullest Never trying to cause a problem Cause I know that we'll get through it like All that negativity is never welcome You can never kill the vibe Cause I know we gotta ride It's that summertime feel Got the melon to pop it Man, I do it for the love All I hate is obnoxious Type of thing you dreamed of Lay back with your feet up Hakuna Matata got no worries Cause my family got my back Took an L but I know we got it back Yeah This the type of thing that you dreamed of Lay back with your feet up Hakuna Matata got no worries Cause my family got my back Took an L but I know we got it back Yeah Sun shining, music bumping, windows down Lay back It's the summertime, feel so fresh Kicks the flow while I'm jamming on the sax <laughs> Tell the kids Winds blowing, music blaring, friends laughing, bass slaps in the back It's that summertime, feel so fresh I bring the flow, I just plays on the sax <laughs> Let the music play Like that's that's like my most Cali song yet. <laughs> right. 
It is. It is Cali. It is yeah. Cali. <laughs> okay, Justin, it's been a blast. I thank you for taking time with us and um, sharing your talents and your music with us. And can you let people know? I know I mentioned it before, but can you let them know if they want to purchase your music, where to go? Yes, yes. Uh, first, of all, like I said, thank you so much for for having me on the show. And then I do also have to give a, a shout out to all the talented musicians and artists that helped me out on these songs. Your Ben Cole, Kid Docs, Mission, Steven Martinez, all just super talented people that you guys sh should check out too. Um, but yeah, you guys can uh, hit me up on Instagram at J Smith Williams Music. Follow me, I'll follow you back. I love making friends. Um, I'm on Facebook at J Smith Williams Music. And then all my music is on Spotify, Apple Music, and everywhere that digital music is sold or streamed. I'm um, just under my name, Justin Smith Williams. Um, and then you can also find everything at my website, jswmusic.com. And we're also like when you do your live stream performances, we'll also put it on our website okay. or our Facebook, um, not our website, but our Facebook page mm -hmm. to let people know um, that they can um, watch you and, or listen to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate that. All so. right. Thank you so much. And thank you for being our first guest on our new segment, Center Stage. And, and again, I would you know, like to have to do this every month. That's my goal. And um, whenever you get, you know, so a new project or whatever, Justin, just feel free, you know, to come back. You're welcome back anytime. And again, thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for listening and watching. And we will catch you next week. Thank you. Isn't it for Kay and Clay? Isn't it for Kay and Clay? Isn't it for Kay and Clay?